My 19th birthday is this Friday and I told my mom and dad, I don't want to do anything if we are gonna have the birthday for my twin too. I was an identical twin and me and my sister were born early and she died a few hours after we were born. Every single birthday since I was little has also been a birthday for her. We go to her grave and put flowers on it and every gift has always had both her and my name on it. Mom gets really sad and always cries for a long time and I have always felt overshadowed on my birthday. The grave visit and flowers and all have always been mandatory and I was never allowed to have friends over or have a party until after we did it. I want to go to dinner with my boyfriend for my birthday at his house and then I'm gonna watch movies with my friends. Mom is upset I'm not making the hour-long drive Friday to do the grave ritual and is really sad and my dad is making me feel guilty since I'm their only living daughter and stuff. I told my mom I don't want to share my birthday with a sister I never even knew and I'm done with sharing with a ghost since this has been my entire life. My parents are really upset and now I feel really bad and maybe I should suck it up but I am just so sick of it. Edit. First of all, I don't live at home I live on campus which is an hour away from my hometown. Second, I don't know if my parents go, they can do whatever they want, just without me. I've hated going to the cemetery since I was like 13 and realized how weird it was, but my parents were very my house my rules about going. I don't like standing over the grave of a dead baby just to pretend to feel sadder than I do. I know it's hard on my parents, but I just want to have a birthday without being guilted by them. My mom gets quiet and cries a little whenever my sister is brought up, and it's turned up to 100 on my birthday, she died the same day we were born. It sucks seeing her like that. I love my parents, but you can love someone and not like their choices too. Not the idiot maybe I would look at this differently if you and your family had actually known your twin, but they basically died during birth. That is truly awful, but you never had any connection to them so sharing a birthday with them is almost a bit morbid. Like instead of having a fun day with activities you get to choose from, you get to have a memorial instead. That's a bummer and I can understand why you want it to stop. I know it must be hard on your mother, but maybe she should start respecting the feelings of her actual living child. I agree with this so much. I try to be understanding when it comes to grief I never lost a child, so who am I to judge, but putting the dead baby's name on the living one's present? That's just weird. It sounds like the mom never processed her grief completely, and now she's not grieving, she's wallowing. That is not healthy for anyone. OP you are not the idiot and I hope you have a very happy birthday. I also feel like the family could visit the grave any other day of the year. It's not like it has to be on the birth date. They are choosing to make every one of Op's birthdays a sad day for them, instead of letting them enjoy it. This was my exact thought. They could celebrate the daughter they have on her birthday and memorialize the one they lost on the following day. Instead, they're choosing to prioritize the lost over the living. It's terribly unfair to OP. The one day, literally, that should be all about her is instead all about a ghost. Giving her gifts with the deceased baby's name on them makes OP a mere proxy. Go reclaim your birthday, OP. Find a way that makes you happy because you deserve that. Her parents should be celebrating the fact that OP survived, instead of mourning the one that sadly didn't make it. Not the idiot, your parents need to move on. I'm not saying they shouldn't still be sad on the day, but forcing you to share your birthday with a dead sister is unhealthy after 19 years. My husband, 35M, is a bank clerk, and I, 29F, have a WFH job which I barely bear, since I'm an active outdoor person, and like doing gardening stuff in particular. I figured since I have a background in gardening, I decided to use our spacious backyard to grow flowers and sell them online after arranging and organizing them into bouquets. When I brought this up with my husband he said this was the worst idea ever, adding this would be a major waste of time and money, and suggested I look for a second job. I didn't listen and started my business little by little. In a matter of 18 months, it started bringing decent money and I gained customers. My husband offered to look at how much I was able to make in the past months and was impressed. The other day he was standing with his drink while I was checking my flowers. He talked about what a good job I was doing keeping our business flowing. I corrected him about it being our business and reminded him about how little faith he had in my potential to make decent money out of growing and selling cut flowers. He was like well. I didn't honestly think your little gardening hobby was going to get anywhere, but now that business is flourishing, I want my fair share of profit and won't settle for less than 
I was puzzled I asked why he thought he should get any share of the profit let alone 50%. His answer was that I was using his soil to grow my flowers on. I said this is our house our soil not just his since we are married and both our names are on the title. He was like actually I owned this house long before you came along, so it's technically mine. I replied that he must be aware it'll be split in half in case of separation. He laughed and joked about how silly I was for hinting separation, just because he was asking for something that he so richly deserves, which is 50% of the profit. I said no and that he was delusional to ask cause even his soil alone doesn't magically grow my flowers, there's a lot of work to it from picking, buying seeds, and taking time and effort to care for them. Collecting, trimming, and selling them while all he does is sit back. I said it didn't matter to him when I started using his soil, why now? He said it always matters when money is involved. We had an argument about it, and he apologized, but only for approaching the subject crudely, but still wants 50%. He's been silent about it since after stating that he already said what he needed to say, and I needed to make the right decision. Am I the idiot? To clarify my husband and I both have our own salaries, and we contribute equally towards expenses. It's his idea since he had a divorce before. He still has things that he owns alone which isn't bad since money has never been an issue. It's not like he needs money for an emergency or something he just wants 50% of the profit going forward. Not the idiot and I really hope you're consulting a divorce lawyer. Your husband just showed his true colors and the picture isn't pretty at all. Leave him to rot on his soil and plant a new garden somewhere else without an entitled burden. Not the idiot, but you need to visit a lawyer ASAP to get your business registered in just your name and to look into a postnup. You need to protect yourself here. This is insane and a huge red flag. I think that idea of separation should be considered seriously. First, protect your business by filing for an LLC if you haven't already. Then take the house and the land and make him buy you out. I am 100% being petty here, but curious if I am actually wrong. Most of my husband's family think I am being childish and need to let the past go, as my sill can't afford this, but her behavior toward us in the past makes me feel this is warranted. Two years ago my house burned to the ground after being struck by lightning. Thankfully it was during the day so our three kids were at school and my husband and I were at work. We lost everything but we were safe. It took almost 11 months for the insurance to pay out. The insurance covered one month's worth of hotel stays, but after that, we were made to fend for ourselves, and the only option we had was to move in with my sill. She tells us we can have her spare room and her office space, since she used neither of the rooms, and her stipulation were we needed to purchase all of our own food and pay her $100 a week. By week three all of that changed. She then decides we need to pay her $250 a week, and we can only use one room. So all five of us were crammed into the smallest room she had, which was the size of a glorified closet space and didn't even fit a twin bed and a small dresser. So we lived out of trash bags and slept on the floor for close to $1,000 a month some months and still had to purchase all of our own food, despite her claiming my children on her food stamps. She also had no bills outside of her land tax, $450 a year, electricity, and heating oil, which she hardly ever filled. So we were essentially paying her so she could do leisure activities. It was the worst eight months of my life. Three months ago my grandmother decided that she wanted to go to assisted living after a fall and transferred the deed of her house to me and basically said it was mine now. It is a five-bedroom farmhouse. My boys insist on sharing a room so we have two extra bedrooms. Well, my sill lost her house last month due to not paying her land tax for several years and asked if she and her stepdaughter could stay with us until they get enough money to move down south. I said sure, one bedroom, $800 a month and you have to buy and cook all your food separately because my daughter is vegan. She looked at me like I had 10 heads and said that she and her stepdaughter should not be made to share a room when there are two extra rooms and stated she cannot afford a rent of $800 while purchasing all of her own food on top of it. I said. Neither could we, but we managed to cram five people into a glorified closet space while you were getting $1,000 in food stamps. Take it or leave it. She decided to leave. Again, I am being told I am childish. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It's $250 a month for the room and $750 a month for you to see her stupid face every day. You're giving her an 80% discount on the rent because she's family.
You are not the idiot. You simply treated your sill how she treated you. Not worse and not better. If she thinks it's unfair then it shows she knew what she did was wrong first. Screw anybody who says you should accommodate. Best thing ever that she left. Enjoy your farmhouse. Childish and petty as hell? Oh yeah. But also not the idiot. Tell your sill and everyone else that you reap what you sow. In my opinion, you're being extremely generous in requesting that she pay $200 less than what you paid for one room.